This is KGW News at Noon. Well, winter weather is just shattering records across the Midwest. You are taking a live look this noon from Chicago. At last check, the temperature there is nine below zero and the wind chill is negative 27. That is sure cold. I'm Ashley Korsland. Thanks for joining us today. Millions of people have been dealing with those dangerously cold conditions all week, but some relief is on the way. Forecasters say temps will finally begin to warm up later today. Here's NBC's Dylan Dreyer with the latest. A massive deep freeze wreaking havoc on most of the country. More than 230 million people battling temperatures below freezing Wednesday. In the Midwest, Minneapolis saw its coldest morning since 1996, 60 degrees below zero with wind chill. It's pretty brutal. It's cold. In Chicago, the polar vortex crippling planes, trains, and waterways, halting air travel at Chicago's O'Hare and Midway airports. The freezing temperatures forcing fires on the rails. Flames seen sprouting from train tracks after officials from Chicago's Metro commuter rail system began setting the fires to keep the system moving. The sub-zero temperatures turning deadly. A University of Iowa student died after police found him behind an academic hall on campus Wednesday morning. The wind chill a biting 51 degrees below zero at the time. Officials say they believe the cold contributed to his death. The frigid air mass moving east, extending its icy grip to cities like New York and Boston, both experiencing wind chills as cold as minus 10 to minus 20. But relief is on the way for millions of residents nationwide. Forecasters saying this cold snap is expected to end by this weekend. Dylan Dreyer, NBC News. And there is a chance of some winter weather here in Oregon. Nothing that crazy, though. Rod Hill's tracking possible snow, though, around the Portland metro area. Well, it's interesting that our snow chances set up with the same cold air mass that's been making news. Not that we will see those temperatures, but we're going to get a little filtration of cold air, we think, come in during the day Sunday, more so Sunday night into Monday. So here is the cold air making uh, news. And by the way, big time moderation taking place. Seven below zero in Chicago, still cold, but keep in mind they had been 22, 23 degree, uh, degrees below zero. Of course, it's in the mid-afternoon hours there. Fargo is now up to six below zero. St. Louis, which had been closer to single digits, now up to 18. So we are starting to see that moderate. Here's that air mass map that shows in purple, the cold air, typically setting up around the North Pole, but this time it has plunged all the way down through the Ohio Valley. You can see it swing out and start to moderate into the weekend. This is Sunday at 7 a.m. And I want to take you in closer to where the air in purple is now starting to spill down over the northwest. Again, this is Sunday morning. By Sunday evening, snow levels start to drop down to about 1,000 feet and eventually could go even lower. Here we are Monday morning. See the purple? This is all cold air that we're now feeding off of and also into Tuesday. And real quick, so what does it all mean? The following snow levels Sunday evening. We're notice on Monday we're talking snow showers, not a snowstorm. That could be anything from flurries to a trace in Portland. Better chance of an inch on the ground and maybe four inches if you live up in the hills. Again, this is Sunday overnight through Monday overnight. Tomorrow it's rain and we'll talk about that forecast coming up shortly. Rod, thank you. We'll talk to you soon. New at noon, a 40 year old cold case in Portland has been solved. Anna Marie Halofka was murdered in 1979 and new DNA evidence led detectives to the killer who is a notorious criminal from Texas. Let's get out to KGW's Christine Pitawanich live in our newsroom. Now, Christine, the big break came from another murder case that was solved just last year. Ashley investigators used something called forensic genealogy to track down the Golden State Killer. And the idea is to link family members to unidentified DNA. Here in Portland, investigators used that same process to solve this 40 year old case. 20 year old Anna Marie Hilavka was found murdered in her apartment on Northwest 18th and Cooch. Despite several leads, the case went cold. In 2009, though, detectives reopened the case and sent evidence to the Oregon State Crime Lab. They found a full DNA profile, but couldn't really match it to anyone. The break came last October, months after the Golden State Killer case. A forensic genealogist mapped the family tree back to Jerry Walter McFadden. His family in Texas agreed to submit DNA, and it was a match. McFadden was executed back in 1999 for a murder in Texas. He was also a convicted rapist. The lead detective says the technology used was instrumental. 
And honestly, without this technology, we never would have solved this case. Uh, upon researching McFadden, we did not find any connection with Oregon. Uh, Detective McGuire and I traveled to Texas. We met with many of his family members and were able to obtain uh, DNA samples that were led to the confirmation of McFadden as our killer. Detectives found out McFadden traveled to the Pacific Northwest back in 1979 with a woman. She apparently dropped him off in Portland and then never heard from him again. Cold case detectives are still looking for more information, though. They're asking anyone who might have lived in Portland in 1979 to come forward if they recognized the photo of McFadden. Back to you. Wow, that is a big break in that case. Christine, thank you very much. The Oregon woman accused of threatening a black couple with a knife and screaming racial slurs was back in court this morning. Amber Rocco is facing several charges, including intimidation and unlawful use of a weapon. She was expected to enter a plea, but that didn't happen because her attorney asked for more time. Now, this cell phone video shows the incident back on Christmas Eve in McMinnville. The couple she was yelling at says the fight started because Rocco said they parked their car crooked. During her first court appearance earlier this month, Rocco apologized for what she did. We are expecting investigators to share new information today about a mother killed in her Lake Oswego home. Her husband was found injured and taken to the hospital. This happened yesterday at Bass Lane and River Run Drive. Police got a 911 call from one of the couple's teenage sons who came home to find his parents hurt. There were no signs of a break in and no weapon was found. Detectives say they have a suspect but wouldn't say if it's the husband. Police say the kids are not considered suspects and are now staying with family. We will continue to follow this investigation and bring you any new information as soon as we get it. You can go to the KGW News app or KGW.com for the latest. It is 12.05 now. The number of confirmed measles cases in Oregon and Washington is now up to 40. 38 of them are in Clark County. There's one case in Multnomah County, the other in King County near Seattle. Most of the cases involve children who are 10 years old or younger. The number of suspected cases is also growing. 13 people who are showing symptoms are just waiting now for the results from their blood work. Ouch, did you hear that high pitched sound? Well, that's what a 7-Eleven store is using to try and discourage loitering. It's um, at the location on Southwest 4th and Taylor. The business has had a lot of people camping out, causing problems there. So KGW's Tim Gordon stopped by to check it out. Well, we're pretty close to the 7-Eleven. We can't hear the noise right now. In fact, we think they don't have it on at the moment, but when they have, it seems to be working pretty well as a deterrent. Now here's the piercing sound that's now playing outside the 7-Eleven. It seems to be coming from a small speaker above the front door. You know, if you spent time in this part of downtown, you may have seen the sidewalks outside the 7-Eleven have been crowded, a magnet really for a young homeless crowd. Uh, they have caused big concerns for people, including customers of the store, drug use, garbage, panhandling, and blocking the path so you can't get by, not uncommon. Still, is blasting an annoying sound outside okay? It just feels offensive slightly because I just don't think you should treat people like insects. But, you know, got, something's got to be done. It sounds kind of unhealthy, you know, because there's certain frequencies that, you know, could do some damage, I'm sure. Now, the Standard Insurance Company owns the building. They say, quote, our goal is to protect the safety of our employees, tenants, and guests in a location that has been consistently plagued by public drug use and menacing behavior. The sound is a safe tool to help address the problems that have persisted at this location. And again, we don't think this sound system is working right now. You see a couple people there in front of the a store, but then again, not a huge crowd. So what do you think of this? Well, you can weigh in at KGW's Facebook and Twitter accounts. In downtown Portland, Tim Gordon, KGW News. And Street Roots, the weekly paper focused on covering homelessness in Portland, says that a noise control officer with the city went to the 7-Eleven and determined the high-pitched noise violated city code. So we'll see what happens with that. 
It is 12.08 now. Officers arrested a Beaverton man for allegedly punching two teenagers at a restaurant in Aloha. We showed you this video earlier this week. You can see the man attack those teenagers that were blurred on the left side of your screen. Well, those teens told us this was completely unprovoked. After our story aired, sheriff's deputies started getting tips from the public that led them to 29-year-old Sion Choi. He faces assault and disorderly conduct charges. Choi is expected to be arraigned on February 11th. Portland police are investigating a hit and run that left a man hospitalized with serious injuries. It happened just before four this morning near Northeast Sandy and 109th Avenue. Police are looking for that suspect now. They say they were driving a dark colored sedan. And officials are trying to figure out how multiple U-Haul trucks caught on fire overnight in Northeast Portland. You can see there in this video a firefighter trying to put out the flames. It happened at the U-Haul store on 73rd and Sandy around 2 a.m. Officials say seven trucks were damaged, but nobody was hurt. Well, Intel named its new CEO this morning. He is Robert Swan. He joined Intel in 2016 and first worked as the chief financial officer. Swan started serving as interim CEO seven months ago. That's when Intel's previous leader resigned after an investigation showed he violated company policy by having a relationship with an employee. In a statement, Swan says he is honored to continue to work for Intel and hopes to move the company forward.